morning and welcome to Wholesome Roots. So last night at midnight when I did my barn check on Fancy, her ligaments were completely gone and her stomach was even more sunken in. So this morning I've already been out to check on her and like her stomach almost didn't even look pregnant anymore. It was so sunken in and the babies have dropped so much. So I'm very hopeful that today's the day, even though I've been saying I gave up, I'm just gonna let it happen when it happens. I can't help but feel like, you know, there's a few more signs today. <laughs> Figures, right? So let's see how the day goes. Could anything be any more precious than a baby goat nuzzling in your neck? And then sighing with contentment? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Oh, sweet boy. Oh, sweet boy. Yeah. Ma! Mom is right there. Oh, did I make you uncomfortable? <coughs> so, we have Shady and Willow getting milk this morning. We didn't separate babies. We're just milking them because they're so full. And they're past the stage of colostrum. It's now milk. So, might as well milk out there extra and use it for us. We could use it because I haven't been separating the alpines because I got my stalls all jammed up with other things happening with baby goats being born. So pretty soon we'll be back to normal and separating the alpines again. I'm still milking the alpines, but just getting less because I'm not separating their babies. But my goodness, this is, I could stay here all day loving on baby goats. Mm, I just wouldn't get anything done. I just wouldn't. Mm -mm. Babies. So each time I bring them up on the milk stand, I take their baby in my arms and I love on them so that the babies are close to them. And it's helping the babies bond to us too. So that's super, super nice. I love it. Too sweet. So sweet. Oh, better than puppy breath. Yep. Baby goat hay smell. Nice. Hey, fancy girl. What are you up to? Are you progressing at all? Hollow. Look, she doesn't even look as fat. The babies are all downhill. And her ligaments are completely gone. And her udder is very firm. Very, very, very. Oh yeah, yeah. I think I think we're gonna have some kids today. I know I've said that already, but I really think that it's gonna be today because, or you know, the next 24 hours. So by tomorrow morning at the latest, because her udder has filled up so much and she just looks so skinny almost. And there's definitely no ligaments, none. They've gone away completely. Complete mush. Look at that. I just, <laughs> her tail is so soft. They're so soft. And there is a definite um, slope from the hip bones down towards the tail that I didn't notice yesterday. When the hips loosen up, that kind of makes an angle downwards. Let's hope so. Crossing my fingers. These cutie pies are so funny. They're getting big, y'all. They're eating and drinking so much, but they love eating on this grass now. They're super enjoying that. So we're gonna put them in the garage at night, but take them out here during the day, and that is working just great for us. Y'all, look at how tight her udder is in her cheats. She is definitely, yeah, I think she's getting much closer already and it's only been an hour or two at the most since her last check. I don't even think it's been that long. I went up to the house, chilled and filtered the milk, made peanut butter banana sandwiches for mm. me and the boys. Mm. Ate them, did a quick little bit of editing, 
from yesterday's videos. Sorry, I got a toddler in my lap who's about to fall asleep, I think. And look at this. This girl is exhibiting the typical labor signs. I think we're finally there. I'm gonna feel really silly if not, but I, I think we're finally there. I hope my prediction that today is right is correct. <laughs> Do I know my go to what? Her water just broke. She just stood up fast and went Psh! flood of water. So it is game time. She will be delivering very shortly. I knew it. I knew it. I am so happy. You go, Fancy. Let's make it easy. Good delivery. See the big yawning stretch. That's my girl. I have a feeling it's going to go fast because she labored for a week. Let's hope. If she's like me, it will. The moment you've all been waiting for. Fancy is definitely in labor. Her water just broke. And I have a sleeping toddler in my lap. That's right, again. Why do I go so good birth at the same time of day? In the middle of the day, weirdos. I'm so happy, y'all. I am gonna update you and videotape as much as I can along the way. brought down here for her in case I needed it. Hey, better to have him sleeping on a towel than uh, in my lap in case I had to get up and do anything. This sweet girl. All right, Fancy, any time now you can start pushing. Your water's already broke. That usually happens after you start pushing, silly girl. <laughs> I'm so excited, y'all. I know y'all are excited too. Fun times. Okay, guys. Um, may or may not have an issue right now. Um, Dave is out of town, and I have tried to contact other people, and they haven't been able to answer. So I got on one of my um, goat groups on Facebook, Successful Goating with Rosie, and Rosie herself is talking with me now. She recommended giving calcium and Nutrigen just in case um, she's having a calcium deficiency issue and that's why she's not pushing. She has been not pushing for 50 minutes now since her water broke. That's not good. She should have been pushing right away. She should have been having this baby by now. So I will keep you posted, but I don't know. Um, alone, and Liam is asleep on the floor, on a towel, and nobody can come to my rescue. <laughs> so it's all on me right now. With my favorite goat, who's been giving me issues, who had a bad labor last time. Ah! Not a good feeling, but I'm sure we'll get through just fine. I'm confident that she's gonna just start pushing once this calcium kicks in. Um, Rosie said it should kick in pretty quick and she should start pushing. So if she starts pushing and the baby comes out, then we're all good. It's the lack of pushing that's got me a bit concerned. So I'll keep you posted. And if I have to go in because the baby's not coming out, um, I don't know if I'll get that on camera because this is this would be my first time ever having to do that. So definitely not something I can teach somebody how to do even though I've read and watched a thousand videos and read a thousand stories. I feel equipped to do it myself but not to teach somebody else how to do it. Not until after I do it and then I can teach you guys if I ever have to do it again. <laughs> it's 
hope that doesn't happen though. Liam's up now and Fancy just pushed for the first time. So I'm feeling a little bit relieved by that. So let's hope she keeps on with the push and it is 2.30 now. So she's got till three o'clock to get this baby out. If she has not, I am going in. I hope I don't have to, but luckily we did see a push. So hopefully that calcium's helping. There we go. Good girl. Good girl. You're gonna be just fine, Fancy. You do this. You don't need my help. I know you can do it. I want you to be able to do this on your own. I just got the coconut oil and trimmed all the nails off of my fingers so that I would have one hand free to go in and feel if I needed to. But then she started pushing really hard, so as long as she's pushing, I think that's a good sign. So I might just wait a few, see what she's gonna do, and go in. Whew, y'all, that was a uh, Scary and exciting, huh, Liam? You don't know. I put him up in the tall chair so he wouldn't bother me. It worked. Um, I have two healthy, living baby bucklings. So that's the good part. The bad part is that's why I did have to go in. Whew. I hope I never have to do that again, y'all. That was... Whew. It wasn't hard. It was just my heart, you know? My heart was thumping. I didn't want to do anything to hurt Fancy or the babies, and I wanted to make sure I got the baby out okay, and that Fancy was okay. So, um, she's doing all right, I think. The babies are good. Babies are alive and healthy. What more could I ask for? Well, I could ask for those, but you know, this is to be expected. Difficult delivery, and it's gonna be bucklings. Yay! I love you, Fancy. I love you. Now you clean those babies up. They're cleaning each other up. How cute is that? Oh, baby boys. You're so adorable. Talk about suck reflex. Is that why you guys were trying to come out head first together? Seriously? I put my hand in there and I'm like, oh, okay. I feel a head, so I just need to get the two front feet and pull them forward. No. So I reach in, no. I feel the head. No. I say, no. okay, good, no. head first. No. This should be easy, no. I just gotta get the two no. front feet forward too. No. So I go down the neck to the shoulder to feel where the feet are, and I feel another head right there. I was like, oh my gosh, no wonder why she couldn't do anything. Both the babies had their heads in the birth canal at the same time. That was never going to happen. So I'm glad I was here um, to make sure that these babies were born alive. And they are adorable. Cute little baby bucks. I guess we were only meant to have one to one this year. That's all right. We'll find good homes for these two as well. Poor Fancy. She's got to put up with that. And me doing what I just did to her. And now she's got to take care of these two sweet babies. Oh, thank God they're okay. I was praying so hard, y'all, that everything was going to be okay. That Fancy was going to be okay. The babies were going to be okay. So I'm just so glad that everything turned out all right. Mama. Babies and mama seem to be doing well, so I'm going to run up to the house and scrub up. I'm going to wash, wash, wash. Make sure I'm nice and clean after that experience. And get my phone charger so I can charge my phone because it's almost dead. <sighs> Alright. 
Now that I'm all clean and showered off, I can share with you guys what that experience was like and what exactly I had to do. So the start of the delivery was her water broke. And that doesn't usually happen before pushing. And so at that time I was like, hmm, that's weird. So I figured she'd start pushing. She didn't. So after 20 minutes after her water broke, I posted on one of my Facebook groups and got some help that said that she may be lacking calcium and might need that in order to have the um, ability to push well. And so I mixed an ounce of Nutri Drench and an ounce of calcium drench in a syringe and I poured it down her throat even though calcium drench burns because it's like high alcohol content or something. That's what the experts, yeah I know you thought I was the expert but you know I haven't had as many deliveries as other people that's for sure. So I poured it down her throat and waited and at the hour mark she still hadn't done anything so I was about to go in when she started to push. So then I started my clock off again from the time that she gave her first push and I said okay now she has a half an hour. So I started waiting and watching and waiting and watching to see if she was going to contract and during that time she had maybe two or three small pushes and I was starting to worry because the half hour mark had quickly approached. So at that half hour mark I knew I had to do what I really didn't want to do and I had to go in. Right at the half hour mark she started to push again and nothing was happening. There were no two little feet coming out like all the other times. So I decided that I was going to wash up and lube up and go in and I thought that at first I would just go in and see if I could feel if the cervix was dilated and from there I would determine what I needed to do next. <laughs> oh they're so cute. Hello precious little boy with frosted ears and beautiful markings. This guy's beautiful too. He doesn't have frosted ears they're slightly different. Anyway I get sidetracked with babies. So I went in and the cervix was well dilated. It was no problem, no issue. Easily went in, but I didn't feel anything. There was, except for the sack, like I could feel the, the bubble around the babies, but I didn't feel a nose or feet. I was like, they should have been this far forward already. So I went in further and I felt a head. And I said, okay, we've got a head forward, so that's good. I just need to get the front feet aligned with the head. So we want two feet on either side of the head. So I felt down the head, down to the shoulder to make sure I was getting the front foot because at first I was feeling all kinds of legs and feet and I was like, I don't know which one is the front. I'm not gonna go pulling on the legs until I know. So I went to go feel down the shoulder to find the proper, to make sure I had the leg of that baby and it was the front leg. And wouldn't you know, I get to the, down the neck and I feel another head. They both had their heads in the birth canal. That is why nothing was happening and nothing would have happened. Both of those babies would have been lost if I had not reacted and done what I needed to do. And I had so much adrenaline going and I had so much of a knowing feeling. Well, hello. I just had somebody hop into my lap. Hi, I'm not your mommy, but I can see how you would think that I would be your mommy. Cause I pulled you into this world. I did. Look at this. Oh my goodness, you're joining in in my lap. Oh, oh my God. Oh, Fancy, your baby loves me. Yes, I know. You gotta go see your mommy and nurse, okay? Mommy, mommy says you come nurse. Go nurse on the other side. <laughs> so, needless to say, I knew that I had to really 
act fast now because I had no idea how long they had been lined up in the birth canal, if they were still alive or anything. So there was a lot of emotions going through me at this point because I knew that I hopefully could at least save one of them. Um, if the one that was forward in the birth canal had already passed, then so be it. I would have to at least get it out so I could get the other one out. And that was kind of my my thought process was act quickly these babies need out well hello other little buggly oh my gosh you guys are friendly for so young <laughs> look at those tails <laughs> oh my gosh so i had to push the other baby back and so I had to push the baby back as far as I could and get it out of the way so that I could pull the other one forward. And so once I pushed that baby back, it kept trying to slip forward. So I had to like push it back and then bring my hand forward really fast and get the head. And I would kind of grab the head and then I would point it towards the right direction. And then I went back down to the shoulder and I pulled forward one foot and... Bye. Hi. <laughs> Hi there. What do you think? What do you think? I'm your mama? Are you Are you imprinting on me? Are you imprinting on me? Yeah. Yes. My little buddy. Go see, go see your mama. I would love to be your mama, but you gotta go to your mama. Oh hello. Oh, oh my gosh. So sweet. Go on. Go on. So I push the one head back and I pull the other head forward and I grab the one foot and I pull it forward and I grab the other foot and I pull it forward and I grab both feet at the same time and I pull them at the same time. And I see that the head's coming with me. So I wait until she pushes and she has a contraction and pushes. And then I pull. And I pull in downwards towards her feet, not out, straight out. Always pull downwards. And I pulled downwards and the baby just popped right out. It was like, boop, that was better. You know, like, easy. So I scooped the squeege off of its face so that it could breathe through its nose. But I did that like super fast and then I immediately went right back in because all I could think was, what if it was the other one that's in trouble and I need to save it, so. I went back in and aligned that one up the same way and I um, just I just got it out the exact same way. Pulled the feet forward and started pulling when she pushed. And there was so much adrenaline involved in all that because as soon as I was done and I had their faces cleared, I saw that they were both breathing and nibbling on each other and that mama was cleaning them and mama was fine and the babies were fine. I then started to get lightheaded and shaky and I was just like, okay, the adrenaline rush has met its <laughs> needs and now I'm like, whew, that was something else. So I made sure that they were getting cleaned and starting to nurse and everything and I said, I'm gonna go shower. <laughs> so I could tell that um, my energy was a little off and I was a little, you know, discombobulated. So I grabbed my doTERRA diffuser and my lavender essential oil and I put it in the bathroom while I showered. And in the shower, I began to shake and I began to cry. And I was crying for happiness that we saved these babies and mom's okay. I was crying for the fear that I felt. I was crying for the, um, just the sheer beauty of it all. And the fact that I knew that I needed to be here. All along, I knew in my heart that Fancy needed me here for her delivery. And I know that God put me here to be with her not a doubt in my heart that she didn't go in the middle of the night last night while I was sleeping because she needed her mama and I'm so glad that I could be here with her because she's my precious girl 
and I love her. And I cried because they were bucklings, not dollings. <laughs> and I cried because they were alive. And I cried because I saved them. Not to toot my own horn at all, but I'm very proud of myself for going through with it and completing this action. So hey, Peoria dude, do I get nominated to Goat Empress now? I'm no longer the Goat Lady, I'm the Goat Queen, according to Peoria dude. But there was some talk that I might even be Goat Empress. So, does that make me? <laughs> you guys don't want to see that view. Um, and that's all normal. Um, there was a good amount of blood that came out with the babies that I was a little bit worried about. Um, but as long as the bleeding stopped, that's the big issue. So there, it was a little bit more red than I was used to with the afterbirth that came out with the babies, but, um, nothing to be alarmed about now that she's not bleeding. She's just dripping and that's normal. Bloody discharge can be two weeks from now still, or, or longer sometimes. But these babies made it all worth it, didn't they? Oh, they're beautiful. Really beautiful. Hello. Hello. So things are going really well down here with Fancy and her two baby bucklings. They're doing quite well and I'm quite happy and satisfied. So I'm not going to sit down here and I'm not going to keep filming because this is already going to be a lot of footage for today in a long video. So I just wanted to tell you guys thank you for being patient with us and thank you for being patient with Fancy and I hope that this video and the story of what happened with Fancy's birth is going to help some of you at some point in the future. Um, I don't hope that you guys have any issues with your birth, but I hope that if you do, you know the right steps to take and that you have to take steps sometimes. It's not always a promise that the baby's just going to be born without any help, unfortunately. It does happen. But, goodness, they're so healthy. They're so, so healthy. And they're beautiful, beautiful boys. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Mama's on the other side of me cleaning your brother. Yeah. Oh, Mama's gonna cut across right in front of me. <sighs> Sweet boys. Oh my gosh, they're both beautiful bucks. I don't need any more 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 bucks. <sighs> Thank you guys for watching Wholesome Roots. <laughs> Please like, share, and subscribe. We will have more wonderful stories in the months and years to come with these goats. We will keep you updated. You guys are going to see our journey as we travel along as the goat lady. Thank you for watching.